Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. In the name and with the authority of the Holy Father, Pope Francis, the image of our Mahal Nga Patrona, enshrined here at the Maasin Cathedral High Altar, has been granted canonical coronation last December 14, 2021. The honor of a canonical coronation is bestowed upon an image of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to which the faithful come with confidence in the Mother of the Lord so strong, that the image is great renowned and the site center of genuine liturgical cultus and of religious vitality. Today, we will all witness this important event in our lives as Christ's faithful people and children of the Blessed Mother. May this elevation of our devotion to her increase in us our longing to build a more intimate relationship with her Son, and may our deepest desires and petitions to God be granted through her powerful intercession. Presiding over the celebration today is our belev beloved Father of the Diocese, the Most Reverend Precioso D. Cantillas, SDBDD. Bishop of Maasin, with the presence of the Apostolic Nuncio to the Philippines, who will officiate the canonical coronation, the Most Reverend Charles John Brown D.D., with other ecclesiastical dignitaries and the whole clergy of the diocese. Please all stand to welcome Christ in the person of his ministers.
In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My dear people of the Diocese of Mahasin, we are so grateful to the Lord for giving us Mary as our mother, ang atong mahal nga patrona. And in this celebration of the fiesta this year, today we have a very special day for the Holy Father has granted the canonical coronation of the image of our Mahal Nga Patrona. And uh, we are so grateful also for the gift of the presence of the representative of the Holy Father in the person of the Apostolic Nuncio, His Excellency Archbishop Charles John Brown in our midst, which we welcome with great jubilation. And with him also the presence of the Secretary General of the Catholic Bishops Conference of the Philippines, Monsignor Bernardo Pantin. Welcome, Monsignor. And so once again, with the great joy and gratitude, we offer the Eucharist, a great thanksgiving to the Father for these great gifts that we as a people, his people in the Diocese of Mahasin has received. And so we renew our love for Jesus, the Son of the Blessed Mother, and our love for her and our devotion as we continue to pray for the Holy Father, for the Apostolic Nuncio, and uh, for the clergy of our diocese. Today, we celebrate also our Diocesan Clergy Day, so that in this special day of our Blessed Mother, we, her most beloved sons, the priest, will continue to imitate her virtues that we may become more and more like her son, Jesus. And of course, we pray for all the faithful of the Diocese of Basin that our devotion to our Blessed Mother will bring us closer to Jesus, her Son. And uh, as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us acknowledge our failures and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Gloria in excelsis Deo. the mother of your son to be our mother and our queen graciously grant that sustained by her intercession we may attain in the heavenly kingdom the glory promised to your children through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Please be seated and let us listen to the readings. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing. As they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as men make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them the pole on their shoulder and the rod of their taskmaster you have smashed as on the day of Median. For every boot that tramped in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us, upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful. 
from David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Draw us unto you, Virgin Mary, we shall follow in your footsteps. Draw us unto you, Virgin Mary, we shall Mary, we 
A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each one in proper order. Christ the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For he subjected everything under his feet. The Word of the Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, 
Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said, and pondered what sort of greetings this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her, who has called barren. For nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Please remain standing. Please all be seated for the homily. Your Excellency Bishop Precioso Cantilias, Bishop of Maasin, Monsignor Bernardo Pantin, Secretary General of the CBCP, Brother priests gathered here in the cathedral, religious men and women, lay faithful of the diocese of Maasin. For me as your papal nuncio, it gives me lots of joy and happiness to be here once again in your wonderful diocese to celebrate today this coronacion canonica de Nuestra Señora de la Asunción, this pontifical coronation of Our Lady of the Assumption. As all of you know, this beautiful image of Our Lady, which is here in the sanctuary of the cathedral, received the honor of a Episcopal coronation on August 15th of 2018, when Cardinal Tagle came and did the Episcopal coronation of Our Lady, La Patrona of your diocese. And today, myself, your papal nuncio, the representative of Pope Francis, is here for my second visit, as I said, in Maasin, to do the pontifical coronation, which is the most solemn, most official, highest form of coronation that the Church bestows on an image of Our Lady. My first visit here was to the island of Limasawa, to celebrate the anniversary of the first Mass here in the Philippines, the beautiful celebration of the Eucharist, the ordination of new priests for your diocese. And today I return to show in my own life my love for Our Lady, which I share with all of you. So the Eucharist and Our Lady, my two visits to the Diocese of Maasin, the Eucharist, which is Jesus, Jesus, our way, our truth, and our life, and Mary, the one through whose yes Jesus came into the world, as we heard in the gospel today. So now, this day, as you come close to your 
diocesan fiesta, which will be on Monday, on the Feast of the Assumption, our hearts are filled with joy and exultation and happiness as all of us bestow this honor on Our Lady, this beautiful honor, which is represented so wonderfully in the super beautifully decorated cathedral, the marching band, all of you with flags and flowers, everyone dressed in your best clothing to celebrate our love for Mary. We are children of Our Lady, each and every one of us as Catholics. We love Our Lady. We want to honor Our Lady. And all these things that we do to show her honor show the love that we have for her. Because by her, yes, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us in the person of Jesus. By her, yes, our difficult lives in this earth were given the joy of God's grace, that joy which comes into us, that joy which is contagious, that joy which is characteristic of Catholics in general, but is especially characteristic of Filipino Catholics, the pueblo amante de Dios, people who love Mary. So today, brothers and sisters here in the Diocese of Maasin, we are like, in a certain sense, from the perspective of heaven, when God looks down on us, the saints and the angels, as we celebrate Mary in this way for this pontifical and canonical coronation, we, in a certain sense, are like a child bringing a flower to our mother with all the love that that expresses. And every mother knows, every mother who's in the cathedral this morning knows that when her son or daughter brings her a flower, even a simple flower, it's a sign of love that really touches her heart. And I'm sure that Mary's heart is touched this morning by the devotion of all of you here in Maasin to Our Lady. Her coronation is the fifth glorious mystery. For our gospel this morning, we read the beginning of the story of Mary's encounter with God, with the angel Gabriel. But we celebrate and we commemorate her coronation, which is beautifully depicted in this wonderful stained glass window here to your left in the transept of your cathedral, this beautiful image of Mary being crowned in heaven by Jesus and the, Holy Fa and the Father and the Holy Spirit. And we, in our childlike way, in our simple way, with everything and all the efforts that we can possibly muster, we try to imitate God in showing our love for Our Lady, like a child bringing a flower to his mother. We honor her because she is the one who said yes to God. Between the Annunciation that we heard in the Gospel and the coronation of, La of Our Lady, which is represented in this beautiful window, we have the mystery that we will celebrate on Monday, on the 15th of August, her Assumption. The fact that at the end of Mary's life, she did not experience death the way you and I will experience death. But in a remarkable way, at the end of her life, she was taken up into heavenly glory. We heard in our second reading this morning the words, just as in Adam all die, which is true for all of us. So in Christ, all will be brought to life. And then there's these really interesting words, but each one in proper order. Christ, the first fruits. Then, at his coming, all those who belong to Christ. So each one in proper order. The first to ascend into heaven is Jesus, 40 days after the resurrection and the Feast of the Ascension. That proper order, though, honors the second one who is assumed into heaven, whose assumption we celebrate on the 15th of August, Our Lady, Mama Mary, who at the end of her life, as I said, did not experience death the way we experience death, but was assumed body and soul into heaven. Her body went into heaven. Just think about it. 
There's no place on earth where we go on pilgrimage to visit the tomb of Mary, right? We visit the tombs of different saints on pilgrimage, but there's no tomb of Mary because Mary, at the end of her life, was assumed into heaven, into heavenly glory. Each one in proper order, Jesus, Mary, and then each and every one of us. Each and every one of us. We too will experience what we pray every time we pray the Apostles' Creed. At the end of the Apostles' Creed, what do we pray? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters, that means that as Mary's body has been assumed in a miraculous way into heaven, our bodies also will rise. We believe that as Catholics. What will the resurrected body be like? We don't really know. St. Paul talks about it in his letters. He says that we'll be filled with light. It will be a different form of, bo of a body, but it will be our body resurrected from the dead. And the fact that we receive the Eucharist, the body of Christ, Jesus' resurrected body, his life, his resurrected life is being infused into us, even in our bodies, so that we will rise at the end in our bodies. And heaven will be a place where in some way we will have our bodies. So the Feast of the Assumption is a feast when we remember that our destiny is heavenly glory with Mary, our mother. And our heavenly glory is a heavenly glory that will include our bodies. So what we do with our bodies on this earth is important. Some people think, no, what I am, I'm a spirit. I'm only using my body. My body is not important. That's not a Catholic response. That's not a Catholic attitude. We are a spirit and a body together. And that is what the doctrine of the Assumption teaches us. And that's why our sanctification comes through receiving the Eucharist, the body of Jesus, in a way that's similar but not the same as Mary, who received the body of Jesus in her womb as a mother. In a similar but not exactly the same way, we receive the Holy Eucharist, and we are prepared for heavenly glory. How important is that? The most important thing for us, really. So that is why we love Our Lady. That is why we ask her to intercede for us so that we will be good Catholics, so we will receive the bread of life, so we will spread devotion to Mary around us. Mary wants us to be apostles. She wants us to be people who bring the faith to others. Principally, that means bringing the faith to those in our own families, especially if we are, if we are a father or a mother. There's no person who's more important for the faith and the transmission of faith, no one who's more important to transmitting the faith than parents, than Catholic parents. Popes and nuncios and bishops and priests, we have our role, but the most important person in bringing the faith to a young person is his or her mother and father. Mary is our heavenly mother. Let's ask Mary to intercede for our mothers here in Maasen, in the Philippines, throughout the world, so they will transmit the faith to their children, give their children the gift of faith. Mothers have given children the gift of physical life, biological life, by giving birth to them, by taking care of them, by loving them. Mary gives us spiritual life, supernatural life, by giving us Jesus and making us apostles of her Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. There's an old saying in Latin about Mary, which is attributed to St. Bernard of Clairvaux, which may or may not actually be something he wrote, but it's attributed to him. And in Latin, it goes like this, De Maria numquam satis. What does that mean? 
of Mary, you can never say enough. Of Mary, you can never say enough. So there's always more to say about Our Lady. And all of us, all of you, all of us who are devotees of Mary, we know her presence in our lives. We know that by praying the rosary, she intercedes for us. We know that Mary is like a mother who is kind of in the background, but organizing things in our lives, preparing things for us, taking care of us in her beautiful maternal way. How gifted we are to have Mary as our mother and how joyful we are today to honor her, to give this pontifical canonical coronation of Our Lady, La Patrona of your diocese, saying to Mary, Mary, we love you. Mary, we thank you. Mary, protect us. Mary, intercede for us. So my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as you can see, for me as your papal nuncio, it gives me so much happiness to be here for my second visit to your diocese to participate in this pontifical coronation, this coronación canonica de Nuestra Señora de la Asunción. May Mary be your mother. May she intercede for you. May, may she show you the path that leads to joy and to heavenly life. God bless you. We now come to the right of crowning of the Our Lady of the Assumption, our Mahal Nga Patrona, the Vice Chancellor of the Diocese, Reverend Father Glenn Tabudlong, will now read the official decree for the crowning of the Our Lady of the Assumption from the Congregation for Divine Worship and the Discipline of the Sacraments. The decree will be read in Latin, then with the English translation. <coughs> Congregatio de culto divino et disciplina sacramentorum. Maasinensis. Instante excelentissimo domino prezioso di cantilias. Episcopo maasinensi. Literis die vizinti duo mensis augusti bis millesimo vizinti unus datis. Vigore facultatum peculiarium. Assumo Pontifice Francisco, qui congregazioni tributarum, per lebenter concedimus, ut graziosum simulacrum biate Maria Virginis, que sob titolo Virginis Domina della Assunzione, in urbe maasinensi pie colitur, nomine et autoritate ipsius sumi pontificis, Prezioso di edemate redimiri posit. Contrariis quebus lebet minime obstantibus. Ex edibus congregationis de culto divino et disciplina sacramentorum. Quator decim mensis decembris bis melesimo viginti unus. Memoria Sante Ioannis a cruce. Presbyteri et Ecclesia Doctoris. Arturus Roach, Prefectus, Vectorius Franciscus Viola, OFM, Archibiscopus A Secretis. I will now be reading the English version of the decree. Congregation for Divine Worship and the Discipline of the Sacraments, Diocese of Maasin, Pursuant to the request of His Excellency, the Most Reverend Precioso D. Cantilias, SDBDD, Bishop of Maasin, in a letter dated 22 August 2021, by virtue of a special faculty given by the Supreme Pontiff, Francis, to this congregation, we freely grant that the gracious image of the Blessed Virgin Mary invoked under the title of Nuestra Señora de la Asunción, which is piously venerated by the faithful, particularly in the Church of the Our Lady of the Assumption Cathedral Parish, city of Maasin, be crowned with a precious diadem in the name and by the authority of the Supreme Pontiff. 
We hereby grant this with no contrary objections whatsoever, issued for the office of the Congregation for Divine Worship and the Discipline of the Sacraments on this 14th day of December, 2021. Signed, Arthur Roach, Prefect Vittorio Francesco Viola, OFM, Secretary. Please all stand. Blessed are you, Lord God of heaven and earth, for in your mercy and justice you cast down the mighty and exalt the lowly. Your marvelous wisdom is shown above all in the Word made flesh and in his virgin mother. For he, your Son, who freely humbled himself even unto death on the cross, now sits at your right hand and, and is radiant with unending glory, the King of kings and Lord of lords. And she, the virgin, who wished to be called your servant, was singled out to be mother of the Redeemer and true mother of all the living. Now she is exalted above the choirs of angels and reigns in glory with her son, praying for all of us, the Queen of Mercy, pleading for grace. Merciful Lord, look upon us, your servants, who by crowning this image of the mother of your son, proclaim him as king of all creation and approach her as our queen. Give us the grace to follow them in serving you, to do what love demands for the sake of our brothers and sisters, to deny ourselves and spend ourselves so as to win our neighbors for you, to be lowly on earth, so as to be exalted in heaven, where you reward your faithful servants with a crown of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Now let us humbly pray to God our Father, who has done great things for the Blessed Virgin Mary and continues his marvelous works in the church. In every petition we say, through the intercession of the Mahal Nga Patrona, Lord, hear us. Through the intercession of the Mahal Nga Patrona, Lord, hear us. For the Church, guided by Francis our Pope and Precioso our Bishop, that in unison with Mary, she may proclaim the wonderful works of God and make His mercy known to all nations, for He casts down the mighty from their thrones and raises up the lowly. Let us pray to the Lord. Through the intercession of the Mahal Nga Patrona, Lord, hear us. For harmony among nations, that through the prayers of the Queen of Peace, hatred may be laid to rest, wars ended, and all the earth enjoy prosperity and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Through the intercession of the Mahal Nga Patrona, Lord, hear us. For those who endure illness, poverty, loneliness, imprisonment or persecution that the blessed virgin the queen of mercy may strengthen and encourage them with a mother's care let us pray to the lord through the intercession of the mahal nga patrona lord hear us for all here present that recognizing the unique dignity of the blessed virgin we may try to imitate her humility and spirit of service and daily love her more and more. Let us pray to the Lord. Through the intercession of the Holy Patrona, Lord, hear us. To continue our communion and participation in the mission of the Church in the Eucharist and Mary, let us pray to the Lord. Through the intercession of the Holy Patrona, Lord, hear us. For all the faithful departed, that they may relish the eternal bliss prepared for them by God in his heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord God, through the prayers of the Blessed Mary Ever Virgin, whom you have given us for our mother and queen, grant that we too may share in the fullness of your grace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We are. 
Please stand. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of His Holy Church. As we observe this memorial of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we bring you the offering, O Lord, praying to be given strength by the humanity of Christ, who offered himself to you on the cross as the unblemished oblation, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly even to earth's ends, you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid you gave us through her the author of our salvation your son jesus christ our lord through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever may our voices we pray Join with us in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the two fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In 
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the blessed bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Preciosa, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son. Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say,
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all these stress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity. In accordance with your will, live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Ang Maria sa Dios gipili ka. Iran sa Asuncion walay buling sa salang sunundon. Ang kaluwasan na tuman kay gidawat muman sa maluluwas kau lagi mong inahan inahan ka nga walay sama sa imong gugma kami na iusa sa katanagman imo kami gipanalipdan sa pagamu mamo nga walay kinutuban O Maria, among mahal nga patrona Dalang pa ng tingpangamagan na mong tanan Ikaw matamis na pagpadayag Sa gugma sa Diyos, ikaw gihatag Iwag sana isalang at mga kalang Kapitan agang akan na mo nagkiyak Ang kabugason ang masigang abiduon Nga nagdan agan na sa among paglawig Isip matinod Anong disipulo Ni Kristo O Maria Among mahal nga patrona Dalang pa Nang ipang amagan Namong tanan Ikaw matamis Nga pagpadaya sa gugma sa Diyos, ikaw gihatag Iwag sana isalag ng mga kalag Reina Coronada, sa langit o giyuta Di purong-purongan sa bulawanong imaya Mapaugsan ng matinuman Masinog tahanon Among inspirasyon sa pagtuman sa amahan Nga kabubutol O Maria, among mahal nga patrona Dalang pa Ikaw ihatag, iwag sana isalag ng mga kalag, iwag sana isalag ng mga kalag. Please all stand. Let us pray. Having received this heavenly sacrament, we humbly pray, O Lord, that we who reverently celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Virgin Mary may merit to be partakers 
of your eternal banquet through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. Dili matukib ang atong kalipay karon sa atong pagtambong sa Santos nga misa o ang pagsaksi sa pontifical coronation or coronacion kanunika sa atong mahal nga patruna. Ang atong mga mata ng lugmaw o ang mga luha wa kapugi midagayday sa atong mga aping tungod sa kalipay o pagdaig sa Diyos o sa mahal nga, patru, mahal nga inahan. So in behalf of the Bishop of Maasin and the clergy who are 100% present, allow me to thank all of you Marian devotees. Number one among them are the Arhon family and the Mercado family, especially of Nalos and Nooging for coming and supporting this event, the canonical coronation, successful, fruitful, and meaningful. The list of those who donated for this affair is so long, and a lot of names fill this cathedral to overflowing, that we choose not to say it one by one here, because it takes the whole day to finish it. From the bottom of our hearts, from the bishop and the clergy, thank you for your generosity and love for the mahal nga patruna. Second, without him, we cannot feel the connection we have with the Holy Father, Pope Francis. His Excellency, Most Reverend Charles John Brown, Apostolic Nuncio or Papal Nuncio to the Philippines. Thank you for bringing the papacy once again to us, the peripheries. Today, we are embraced by the arms of Pope Francis, Holy Father, a big hand. Connecting us to the rest of the bishops in the Philippines by his presence. Thank you, Monsignor Bernardo Pantin, the Secretary General of the Catholic Bishops Conference of the Philippines, or CBCP. A big hand. <clears throat> Thanks to the Yusan Curia officials, working comm heads and members. Father Vincent Salang, Father Garnet Kirong, Father CB and Cathedral Priest with PPC and PFC, and St. Joseph College and the City of Maasin with Mayor National Mercado and PNP Force for working hard to make this happen today. A big hand. Thank you all parish priests and the parishioners you tag along to join us today. Thanks for your synodality. Thanks to you visiting priests, religious sisters, brothers, seminarians, hermanos, hermanas, hermanos, hermanas of the past and of the present, the choir, pontifical servers, liturgical ministers. Thanks guests from Manila, especially U.S. experts, a big hand. <clears throat> Lastly, without him, who petitions the Holy Father to recognize how much the blessed image of the Mahal nga Patrona contributes to the vibrancy of our faith and foster trust in God, we don't have this pontifical coronation. His Excellency, Most Reverend Precioso de Cantillas, Bishop of Masin, the people and the clergy 
cannot thank you enough for promoting devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Thank you for your leadership and pastoral care of your people. With you and us, people and clergy, we will continue and work hard for deeper communion, fuller participation, and greater openness to fulfilling the mission of the Church with our Mahal na Patrona, a big hand. Let us all say, Viva Mahal na Patrona! Viva la Virgen de la Asunción! Please all stand. I request the Apostolic Monsieur to bless with me the people. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary, willed in His great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with His blessing. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.
Brothers and sisters, united in a praise and thanksgiving to God and to the Blessed Virgin Mary, ang mahal nga patrona sa maasin, let us express this great jubilation through dancing our Kadiganan Festival Dance. Let us all dance and express our love to our Mahal Nga Patrona.
¡Viva Mahalga Patrona! ¡Viva Vergen Sassonshon! ¡Viva Vergen María! Ang atong obispo, si Presyoso, o ang atong papal nuncio, muadto, muduaw sa imahin sa karaang mahal nga patrona.